and uh, we warmly welcome you all uh, to this uh, lecture organized by JMA. Uh, as you all know, the JMA organizes uh, webinar lectures uh, in a regular manner to educate and uh, update the doctor, uh, the budding doctor. Uh, so, uh, and uh, as you all know, uh, this uh, monkeypox, uh, it is uh, the incidence of monkeypox is increasing in trend, uh, not only in African countries, uh, also in Western countries are getting affected uh, due to this viral illness. So I think uh, it is a timely topic to discuss uh, regarding the uh, monkeypox. And uh, I am uh, really uh, happy to introduce our uh, speaker, Dr. Uh, Gedi sir. Uh, to be honest, he doesn't need any sort of uh, introduction. Uh, he is a, a well-known consultant physician in uh, Northern uh, province. He is actually graduated from uh, Faculty of Medicine, uh, University of Colombo in 1998, uh, with uh, second upper class and distinction in uh, pediatrics. And uh, he has got through the um, MD selection exam uh, in 2001 with the Island Life first time. And he has uh, got his uh, uh, postgraduate degree in MD medicine in 2004. And he has done his uh, post MD tra local training in NHS of Colombo and uh, post MD overseas training in uh, New Zealand in 2006 and 2007. He is a board certified specialist in internal medicine since uh, 2006 and he also got through the uh, FRNDD examination in 2007 and he obtained his diploma in diabetes in 2009 and uh, fellowship in diabetes mellitus in 2002 from uh, Medgar City Liverpool Academy and he is also a fellow of Sloan College of Fission as well as American College of Fission and uh, he also served as an examining uh, MD Part 1 and Part 2 examination. Since uh, 2008, he is attached to Jaffa Teaching Hospital as a consultant physician. And he has already done uh, several um, lectures, interviews, and even a press meet on uh, this topic. So I don't think uh, we can find a better person than him uh, to address on this uh, topic. So without further delay, uh, I cordially invite uh, Dr. Gedi Sarangsar to deliver his speech. Over to you. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Gedi for the kind words of introduction. Uh, thank you very much for the Japan Medical Association for giving me this opportunity to speak. And also, thank you, Dr. Gedi Spencer, for being present in this occasion. And also, the Dean, Dr. Spencer Kumar, for being a uh, guest uh, yes, in this occasion. And also, I would like to thank every consultant who has come here, and Dr. Major Officer, and the Deputy Director, Dr. Sridhar Bhavan Raja. I want to welcome you all. So, today, my task is I need a lecture on monkeypox. Actually, it's not a lecture. Actually, I'm going to give a story. The story starts many centuries ago when the fox viruses were there and it's a fight between the fox viruses and the human race. So, I'm going to take you through several centuries back when smallpox or variola virus was prevalent. Now, fortunately, we don't have this virus. If you ask your grandparents, they will be able to tell about this virus, how poor it is. You can see this picture of a young girl who was affected by variola virus, a smallpox, major virus. A face full of blisters and the whole body is covered with blisters. It's the most devastating and cruel disease that human race ever had in the history. Fortunately, it has been eradicated. And it doesn't stop there. It leaves permanent scar on the face. It's horrible. And even vision can look. This picture shows the scars of uh, smallpox. Its eyes are gone, 
is permanently blind to this patient shown in the picture. So let's look at the smallpox or variola virus. It's a monkeypox. It's the most devastating disease known to the human race. Affected more than three thousand years ago. Because evidence by uh, Egyptian mummies, the lesions were identified in the Egyptian mummies. Then there was a breakthrough in the history of medicine where Edward Jenner, a British doctor, found the vaccine for it in 1796. That story was also very interesting because he found out that the cowpox, which was prevalent in the milkmaid, uh, if those who take milk from the cow, they got the infection, cowpox. He took the virus, cowpox virus, and injected in normal people and showed that this this is can be prevented. It's a medical practice. It's a milestone and the medical history. And in 19th century, Vaccinia vaccine was introduced. Vaccinia virus is a harmless virus, doesn't pose any problem to human being, has been used. It's the same group of virus for the smallpox. It has been used for the treatment of uh, smallpox, the prevention of smallpox. Later, WHO started a war against smallpox. It started, the war started 1967. They visited each corner of the world, including African countries, every house they have visited, vaccinated the people. And after 10 years, I proud to say the human race, biggest victory in the human race is they have dedicated smallpox. Then the last case of smallpox virus was reported in 1977 in Somalia. And in 1980, WHO declared the smallpox was eradicated. Smallpox vaccination stopped after 1980. That was a mistake. After eradication, they have stopped the vaccination. And that is the start of the pox viruses in the world, including our friend monkeypox. Now, it doesn't end there. Smallpox is still there in the world in the laboratories of the superpowers. It is there in the hands of the superpowers. If it goes to the hands of the wrong people, it can cause problems. Biopest and biowarfare. Right. With the background of that, I am coming to the monkeypox. Well, monkeypox has been there in the world for the last 50 years. But the world didn't look at it. Because it was prevalent in the very remote countries like Congo based in, uh, in uh, countries, the Central African countries and West African countries, including Nigeria. They are poor countries, remote countries, so the world did look at it. Until recently when the epidemic has started. This epidemic, as you all know, started in May 2022. Now recently, uh, from the WHO report, 27 countries have been affected. About more than 70, 780 people have been affected by this disease. The map shows, it's clear I think, the map shows the countries have been affected by this monkeypox virus. The disease started around, so this epidemic started around 13th of May 2022. And surprisingly, this uh, epidemic, no one knows from where it has come from. Because most of the people affected are Native Americans and Canadians and Europeans. Usually this epidemic comes from people who have visited Central Africa and uh, Western Africa from the, the place where the monkeypox is ending. So nobody knows how it came. But we have a clue that how it spread. Because mostly affected are males and males who sex with men in a sense. Homosexuals are being affected by this current epidemic. So, going back to the history of monkeypox, monkeypox virus first identified in the experimental monkeys in 1958. It was identified in the monkeys, so the name goes as monkeypox. First case of human monkeypox was reported in 1970 in the Republic of Congo, the Central African country, where it is now in the It is endemic in Western Central African countries for the last 50 years. The picture shows the countries that it is in 
time to time epidemics occurred in non NDP countries, including USA, Israel, and Singapore. Such one epidemic is interesting, which has occurred in 2003, the USA epidemic. 71 cases reported there, and 35 confirmed cases of monkeypox. It's interesting when you look back the epidemiology of this epidemic, they have brought rodents and uh, fairy dogs. They are not actually dogs, they are uh, large squirrels which have been uh, kept as pets in America. They brought it from uh, Africa. Those fairy do dogs and uh, rodents have brought the infection to America. And the people who grow these pets had the fire in Let's look at the virology of the monkeypox. It belongs to the orthopox virus, it's genus orthopox. Other orthopox viruses are variola virus, that is the smallpox virus, and vaccinia virus, which is there. Uh, the vaccine used to uh, protect from uh, variola infection and our friend monkeypox. So, three are the main uh, orthopox viruses in the world. It belongs to the family of Oxviridae. And going back to the endemic areas, there are two clades. One is the West African clade, which is prevalent in the West Africa, including Nigeria, which is a mild disease. It causes less mortality and infectivity is less. Other one is the Central African clade, which is a more virulent one. It spread very rapidly and causes mortality. Mortality range up to 11 percent. It's very high mortality. You can see this picture is the micro uh, electron microscopy of the virus. The virus looks like uh, brick like appearance. It's an envelope of the virus. When you look at the virus virology, it's a DNA virus. If you can see you now the COVID 19 is the RNA virus. So there's a difference. Because RNA virus undergo mutation very rapidly and immunity no, no longer lasts. The vaccines are free. But DNA virus don't mutate that fast. So it's a good news that this virus can be controlled very well by immunization. And the immunity which occurs after the infection is also like it's a unvirus virus. So it can be easily destroyed by soap and water. Simple. If you wash your hands, for the 60 seconds, you can kill the virus. Not only that, alcohol based, based uh, hand stuff can kill the virus in 15 seconds. You don't have to keep washing your hands with the alcohol stuff. And heat can kill it about 70 degrees Celsius. If you heat it for 70 degrees, the virus will die. Let's look some of the survey host of the disease. It's a zoonotic disease. That is, it occurs from animal to human. And the many reservoir hosts are small mammals like rodents and squirrels. The monkeys are actually accidental hosts. Monkeys and human beings are accidental hosts. Monkeys are not the reservoir. Let's look at the transmission of the disease. It's important to know this transmission because to prevent, we have to know the transmission. The transmission occurs in two ways, animal to human transmission, human to human transmission. How is the spread from animal to human? When the animal bites or such, it spreads. Contact with body fluid of the animal, it spreads. Eating undercooked meat, that's called bush meat, is another source of infection. This undercooked meat eating is a habit in the West African and Central African countries where they eat the rodents and squirrels because of the poverty, uh, civil unrest, they live in forests and they eat these things and they get them. And cleaning the animal cages also known to cause this disease which was uh, demonstrated in the 2003 American epidemic. Which is more important to us is the human to human transmission. Close contact is the main cause for the spread. Close contact. Infectious 
in lesions and contact of lesion in the material will infect the person who is in close contact. Not only that, patient's clothes, bed sheets, towels, etc. pomades can also cause the disease to spread. Large droplets created by sneezing, <coughs> coughing and laughing is the source of infection, especially in the bidemic space or the initial phase where the patient is uh, coughing and sneezing, having the protect symptoms, it can spread like COVID. But there is a main difference between COVID and this thing, the large problem, not the small droplets and droplet nuclei seen in the uh, COVID-19. So it is not going to spread that rapidly, it is not that infectious. Studies have shown that close contact for less than six feet for at least three hours is necessary for the disease to spread to another person. So it is such a long duration. So you have you imagine that you there for three hours with one person it is going to spread. So it's a close contact and how household contact is going to spread the disease and in fact sexual contact also. Then let's look at the symptoms and signs of the disease. The incubation period is 5 to 21 days. It is such a long duration. Initial proclamal period, that is the widely phase, you have symptoms which are non specific. They get high fever, headache, body ache, muscle ache, and back ache. One clue is they are, they have lymphadenopathy. Then, like lymphadenopathy in the axilla, groin and neck. It's a painful lymphedema. Right? So that is very important to know. Not only that, the proclamal time, they develop lesions in the mouth. Oral cavity, they can develop ulcers. So, our main worry is whether we are missing this infection because chicken pox is another different diagnosis for the monkeypox. Let's look at how to differentiate chicken pox from monkeypox. Both are similar appearance but different viruses. Chicken pox is a slurpid virus, which is entirely different from this uh, orthopox virus. But appearance is slightly similar, but I will tell you how to differentiate. Chicken pox or Valsella zoster, what from the symptoms are mild? In chicken pox or smallpox, lymphadenopathy almost, almost never occurs unless secondary bacterial infection occurs. That is also regional lymphadenopathy is secondary bacterial infection. Right. Then, I will come back to that later with the differences between chicken pox and monkeypox. The February period lasts for about 3 to 5 days in monkeypox and 1 to 3 days later, the rash develops. Let's look at the monkeypox rash. Rash starts on the face. This is from the endemic area. I, what I am going to describe now is the endemic area, the Central Africa and uh, Western African countries. Starts on the face, spread to the tongue and limbs. Centrifugal distribution. But it more affects the face than the limbs compared to the trunk. That's the difference. Because chicken pox, as you all know, it starts in the trunk and affects the trunk more. That's the difference. And also, monkeypox affects the palms and toes too, which is not seen in the chicken pox. And the lesions are very painful, intensely painful, and when they heal, they are intensely cruelty. So this makes some difference. The lesions develop at macules. You all know very well when macules are flat, discolored patches. Then it becomes hapules. Then it becomes vesicles, pustules, and then the muscle rupture and scap formation of them. And this scap uh, falls off and the new skin will form. This takes about four weeks. Until that four weeks, they are infected. Very important. That new skin formation occurs and then the infectivity stops. So it takes nearly four weeks for the patient to be 
not the infected. So that's very important because you have to isolate the patient for four weeks. That's a large time. And I think the health sector burden will be great. And they develop ulcers in the mouth, gel area and eye too. These are called finanza. These are ulcers are very painful. Very painful. Antipop crash further. Now I am looking at the current epidemic. Current epidemic monkeypox has is very bigger, very bigger. Because I told you that this is occurring in homosexual mainly. So lesions are around the anus, genitalia, perianal region and the mouth. Any sensible person will know where it flow. So it is going to be a tough time. So differential diagnosis goes on typically. The con condylometa lata, condylometa accumulata, which is the human papillomavirus infection, lymphogranuloma venerea, which is primarily a tectomotis causing ulcers in the ulcers and blisters in the area. Hemcroid, purpose simplex 2. So these are the differential diagnosis for this situation. But you have to remember that monkeypox is not a disease. It is not a sexually transmitted disease. It is spreading because of the close contact, not because of the sex. So, sexual transmitted diseases carry tick marker. Tick mark. So, Renaissance have a stuck and tender African country people are affected or not because of the sex. Monkeypox crash further. Monkeypox crash vesicles are large. They are 0.5 to 1 centimeter size compared to small box, uh, chicken box uh, flash. What the lesions are uniform in size and development at one site. That is, as you can see in this picture, the lesions are all are almost same size and same stage of development. Chicken box is not like that. Chicken box, you can see various stages of development, like fuels, fuels, vesicles, caps, in the same place which is not seen in the monkeypox. I have discussed the next point. The doctor period has uh, last for about 3 to 4 weeks and lesions are infective until the scabs fallen and the new skin fall. So let us, I have discussed already but I recapitulate how to differentiate from chickenpox. Chickenpox has never occurs on the palms and sore. First, check the trunk, more rash on the trunk on chicken box. Chicken box has different stages of development at the same site. Vesicles are small and usually not that painful. This is the example of a chicken box rash. Right. So, when the rash is healed, they go into convalescent phase or recovery phase of monkey box. Lesion heal completely and per patient recovers from the illness, but uh, there are problems. Hypopigment that touches can remain and the scars can remain. That's the bad news. Because if it occurs on the face, then scars can remain for life. Immunity also lifelong, as I discussed earlier. Now let us look at some epidemiological terms which are necessary for you to understand. Uh, what is the suspected case? Suspected case is a person from a non endemic area. Non endemic area, I repeat. Has a rash suggestive of monkeypox and one of the following features. One or more of the following features. Headache, fever more than 38.5, myalgia, backache, and asthenia. If these are there, and if you can safely exclude the other causes like chicken box, you can call it a suspected case. Suspected case, very important to know because if you know the uh, suspected case, you have to immediately isolate the patient, you have to take specimen, relevant specimen, and notify to the local authority urgently. Very important. As you all know, chicken box also a notifiable disease, most of you. We have no chicken box also not very disease. This is very important to notify monkeypox. What is probable case? 
प्रोबेबल केस इज सस्पेक्टेड केस प्लस द एपिडेमियोलॉजी लिंक कर रहे एपिडेमियोलॉजी लिंक मीन आइदर ही हैज कम फ्रॉम अ इंडिजिनस एरिया दैट इज फ्रॉम द वेस्टर्न सेंट्रल अफ्रीकन कंट्री दिस इज द लास्ट ट्वेंटी वन डेज ओ ही हैज अ क्लोज कांटेक्ट विद द मंकी पॉक्स पेशेंट दिस इज द लास्ट ट्वेंटी वन डेज सो दैट इज प्रोबेबल केस कंफर्म केस इज when you get a probable or suspected case confirmed by laboratory in the laboratory investigation strictly pcr not other pcr is a specific test for monkeypox rt pcr real time pcr or conventional pcr you can do to detect this virus for definitive or confirmed case it's very important should be notified internationally let the deploy uh, Duty of the country and the bureaucracy to inform to the Geneva Convention. So now we have medical students. We have four not international not here diseases such as you know, cholera, plague, yellow fever, and now a friend on top. It's an international not here disease. Let's look at the complications of the disease. Vesicles may be suddenly infected and cause shock. You get a big shock and so on. Lesions in the unusual sight, eyes, eyes, cornea, and go blind. Genitalia and anus. I don't have to tell you how painful it will be. <coughs> Patients can develop bronchopneumonia, like COVID-19, encephalitis, cancer, dehydration, another common problem. Because why they are dehydrated? Because they are full of vesicles in the body. They will be evaporating. These 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 are oozing. Not only that, they have mouth full of ulcers, painful ulcers. They can't drink and eat. They will be vomiting, diarrhea. So dehydration is a common problem. So hydration is very important. Then the pregnancy-related complications can develop abortions and stillbirth due to monkeypox. Permanent scars are the problem, and blindness, permanent blindness. Mortality of the monkeypox usually it's a mild symptomatic disease compared to smallpox. Most of the this current epidemic mortality rate is almost zero. No death. I think because one reason is this has occurred in a very established healthy country. They are they are not letting the patient to die. That may be one reason. West African plate mortality about three to six percent. Central African plate mortality almost eleven percent. Very high mortality. But most of the people with the mild transmitting disease, but it can be cause severe disease in elderly children under eight years, pregnancy, postpartum, immunocompromised patients, and malnourished patients. Not only that, it can cause severe illness in eczema patients. Eczema, skin rashes, can cause permanent disease. Okay, let's look at the investigations. Detection of virus is the main stage of investigation. PCR is the investigation of choice. You can do electron microscopy, you can do viral culture. Though they are not advisable, they are not very specific. Viral culture is dangerous. Sample. What are samples you are going to take? Temporary period you can do oral pharyngeal, nasal pharyngeal swab as you did for COVID-19, and you can simply take oral pharyngeal swab also and send for investigation. But more commonly you will encounter the patient with rash, so it's easy. You can take the sample from the rash. You can take a swab from the be ruptured vesicle. You can take fluid from the vesicle and vascular by a syringe. You can take roof of the lesion by the sample. Uh, you can take the sample and take the step. In virus, this can be done, but easy to say. But you have to be very careful because these patients are very infective, biohazard. So you have to wear the full PPE kit, take all the precautions, and take the sample. Antibodies also you can do acute conversion sample, and uh, it it is proper epidemiology, but not necessary. It's all for oxidation of the antibodies. 
transport of specimen you have to be very careful. It should be highly secure, triple package, and level with your reader. The category A sample you have to be very careful in transporting. Transporting should be done in the four degrees Celsius and in cold box. How are we going to protect our healthcare workers and care members? So, a full PPE kit should be worn when you are seeing the patient as that if you have done for the COVID-19 infection. Personal hygiene is very important, washing hands with soap and water, or alcohol with top you have to use before and after seeing the patient. You ask the patient to wear a mask, very important. And small vaccine, the vaccine or vaccine provides 85% of the protection. I told you in 1980 the vaccination stopped. So majority of people who are in the front of this stage called are protected. Oh, for if you are not sure, look at your arm. There are two scars. One is the BCG scar, and the other one is the smallpox scar. If both are there, you are safe. Each weapon. So don't worry, those who are in the back. The vaccine is there. I tell you. The new vaccine is introduced in 2019 for monkeypox. It has been used in uh, close contact and caregivers in the world now. It is available if it comes to Sri Lanka as well. And post exposure prophylaxis also reaction. If you are exposed to monkeypox, yes, sir. post exposure prophylaxis, vaccine and immunoglobulins are available. It can be used in immunocompromised people and neonates for the protection of monkeypox. Prevention in the community is important. Avoid animal contact. Close contact with animals always avoid. But fortunately in Sri Lanka it is not prevalent in animals. Undercook douche meat you have to avoid. That is not for here in uh, African countries. So how people go and Hunt animals and eat them in there, that's not obligated also there. Yeah. So you have to avoid them. Vaccination of the high risk people like veterinary surgeons is important. And restriction on animal imports should be done, especially during this epidemic time. This is important for you all. Prevention of uh, human to human transmission. Isolation and notification of monkeypox is very important. PPE, hand hygiene for the caregivers and healthcare workers, vaccination to close contact and preferably in future to the healthcare workers, avoid close contact and un unnatural sexual contact as much as possible, and vaccine and hemoglobin is another way. Several restrictions and cleaning at the airport and hour is important. Wearing mask and other respiratory precautions. Are important. So don't forget the mark. Treatment of monkeypox. <coughs> Isolation, notification, I have already discussed. Sensitivity is the majority. So supportive treatment is mainstay of the treatment. Hydration is important, oral and IV hydration. Antibiotics and antifungal drugs for the sudden reinfection can be used. Painkillers, very important. Paracetamol is and opioids, including morphine, may be necessary for pain. Never use NSA because it can cause hemorrhage, hemorrhagic delay, and so on. And no for aspirin, especially in children, it can cause rise. There is a good news that the antiviral drug available for COVID, which is the drug used for smallpox. Developed for smallpox for the laboratory workers, it can be. Dose is 600 mg BD for 2 weeks. Is, when the virus comes, the drug also will follow to see them. Eye lesions, no for steroids. Please don't put any steroid drops. Public antibiotics to prevent second directly infection. Don't put pneumonia, as you all know, you can give antiviral, antibiotic, oxygen, NID, or uh, invasive medication. That's needed. Okay, 
So I'm going to finish my story. So monkeypox is the re-emerging infection. It can come to Sri Lanka, well, it can come, it will come. Because in our tourist country, people come for various reasons to Sri Lanka. So don't forget the old hotel infection, including smallpox, monkeypox. Anything can come at any time. At the same time, don't forget the COVID-19, another wave is coming, please wear a mask, and don't forget the dengue, which is different in our region. That can be just two. Thank you very much for your patient listening. Any question, I can take it. Oh, the experts are here. You can ask the experts for any questions. Thank you very much, Sanjay. So thank you, uh, Dr. Desiswan, for this excellent uh, presentation. Uh, it was very interesting and informative, and uh, you have taken us through the history of pox virus and multi-pox virus, and uh, you have uh, cleared almost all the doubts we had at the beginning of the uh, presentation. So if anybody is having any doubts or any questions, oh, I will now. Mean, <laughs>